here's Ed Bernstein. Hi, welcome to our show. Well, if you're hungry, you're watching the right show because today my guest is John Curtis, uh, food critic extraordinaire and uh, as well as sometimes an attorney. <laughs> right? I've but, been a lawyer for a long time, but I've right, been a food but, critic for a long time too. And now you're, you're just talking. Now you're being better well known as a food critic than an attorney. Yes, uh, I think I because kind of people more... rather eat than sue. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. People would rather eat and talk about restaurants than yeah. talk about legal rights and courtrooms and things yeah. like that. This is uh, John's book, Eating. Here we go. Where is which camera we got? Here we go. Eating Las Vegas, which is um, the fifth, is, fifth edition. Fifth, yeah, and you update it. All, try to update, update it every year, right? Yeah, we, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. And the, the great thing about um, this book is, uh, you know, we can come and it's like, you know, you sit there with your wife and it's like, you know, where are we going to go for dinner? And the common and lament. It's the, it's the same two or three. I mean, we I'm told, as everybody goes back to it's kind of a habit. You go back to the same two or three places where you yeah. feel comfortable, right? Cause, yeah, because you know, because I like the veal parmesan here, so let's right. go there, right? Which yeah. is so boring. You got to stop doing that, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's great to really explore new places, and but the, unless you know you know what to expect I mean look we'll have limited money and limited time right. so you walk it's difficult to try a new restaurant because you don't don't want to be disappointed well that you just hit on the key thing there. unless you know I love the way you praise that because that's what people that's why how people choose where to eat and people are looking for that predictability and consistency and as a critic I mean, I, I understand that mindset, but what I try to get people to do is to get out of their comfort zone. And what my book tries to do is get you out of your comfort zone because Las Vegas is just one of the great restaurant cities in America, both on and off the strip. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have these options. And, and uh, there are options that, can, that you can go to, and you may not know you're gonna get the same great veal parmesan you had last time, but there may be a whole world of new flavors open to you, mm -hmm. and that's why I encourage people to take a risk. But you know, take a risk after it's been vetted by me and other food writers, because that's what we do. We do the heavy lifting so you can just go, well, hey, this place is recommended, now let's go there tonight. And not everybody has the expertise that you have. I mean, you can taste something, and you can taste those flavors that I, you know, really don't observe at all. You know, I mean, they're just not as prevalent or uh, to me as they are to you. Um, so, when I go into a restaurant, maybe I'm looking for. Yeah, I want the food to taste good. I'm not as critical as some of the flavors as you, but I want to feel. I like you know, the ambiance, the the friendliness, the you know. Service. You know, it's yeah. kind of like chairs. You know, you know, everybody knows your name. You know, you feel yeah. comfortable going back. Yeah. People reckon. You know. <laughs> You know, it's. I mean, that's that's an important ingredient also. Well, I think most people choose food a restaurant on the basis of service, and the big difference between a professional food writer and and the, the amateur, the, the consumer, is service isn't as big a deal to us. I mean, I, I always like to say that. I, I don't care if they dump soup on my head as long as it's good soup, okay? But, mm -hmm. to the, but to the average person who only goes out once a week or twice a month or maybe only two or three times a year, service is very important and comfort is very important. I'm more about the food itself right. just because I'm, you know, because I'm a food nerd, obviously. And I, I, I kind of drill down into like just what is better, you know, is this little piece of sushi better than that little piece of mm -hmm. sushi, you know what I mean? And, and to the average palate, it might be, well, they're pretty much the same. So I make those distinctions. But but uh, I understand that people are looking for service and good service, and uh, I find in, in most of my travels, in places I've known and in not known, I see service very, very is very good in this town. I think Las Vegas restaurants have some of the, because of our tourist industry, right. we have some of the best service across the board, and I, like you, I travel the world and the United States, and boy, wherever you go up and down the strip, you get top quality service. Very rare to get bad service in a Las Vegas restaurant. And we teach it here now. Isn't UNLV now known as like the number one uh, oh, yeah. university in the world? Uh, yeah. You know, at least for sure in the United States. Right. You know, if you want to learn something about the restaurant business. Right. And it's a trickle down. It's kind of a trickle down theory too. Because of our strip restaurants, the high toned French places, the great steakhouses, the, the big hitter places, the Bellagio and the Wynn and the MGM, because they are so good, the place in the neighborhood you have people either coming from or going into the strip and that that rising tide right raises all boats and and that's why you even see in little mom-and-pop restaurants now 
Uh, people have an eye towards the strip, and it teaches people, you know, how to seat people, how, you know, how to how to uh, present specials, wine lists, uh, good cocktail programs. All of this is trickles down from the strip, and now kind of is, uh, is spread throughout the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I wanted to talk to you about the book in a moment because the book you list um, different uh, top ten restaurants, and you go by different uh, genres of food, and talk about some of the best spots in town. But a lot of these restaurants in Las Vegas are um, manned by very famous chefs. Well, manned being a uh, or, or relative term. Started, yeah. Well, that's yeah. what was my question. I mean, because they come in, they put their name on something, and probably start the you know the business going, and right. then and then they're off to the next city to yeah. the next restaurant. And you, you just hit the nail on the They slap their name on the door, right. and that's unfortunately that process or, or, or that syndrome has infected the strip in a big way. It sort of put us on the map uh, 20 years ago with uh, when the uh, MGM first opened with like Coyote Cafe and uh, Emeralds and Charlie Trotters and then the Bellagio, remember Bellagio 1998 right. with the Maccioni's at Le Cirque right. and Wolfgang. A Wolfgang Puck and all that. So it started back then 20 plus years ago but now it's just become a kind of a franchising game, mm -hmm. a marketing branding game where a big chef comes to town and you, you, you see it with, uh, there's new places called Chica at the, at the Venetian, right. you see it with Morimoto at the MGM. They come to town, there's a big PR push, they get all their pictures taken, here they are slicing the fish, serving the customer, and then bam, you know, they're back to New York or San Francisco or Miami or wherever they come from. And all they've really done is they have licensed their name to the hotel to use that uh, for marketing purposes. And part of the contract is then they come to town two or three times a year. They make a big show of it being their restaurant, but they're not, they're not running the restaurant. The restaurant's being run by the hotels and don't, don't make any mistake about it. It's, a, it's an MGM restaurant or a Caesars Palace restaurant. It is not a Bobby Flay restaurant. So would you then, um, recommend um, our, to our viewers not to choose a restaurant by who the chef, the famous chef's name at the restaurant? That, well, that's, that, that's another great question because it kind of depends because some of them run great, great programs even though they're absentee celebrity chefs. Mm -hmm. I think Wolfgang Puck generally across the board. You go to Wolfgang Puck restaurant, you have a very high pitch level of quality in everything but he does. But in that particular example, he has partners who, yes. are, who live in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, David that, Robbins. Right, David who Robbins. are on top of what's going on there. Exactly. So the, the, uh, Wolfgang Puck invested heavily in Las Vegas and mm -hmm. I think he has four or five restaurants here now and all of them are really, really good. Mm -hmm. Michael Mina, another well-known national celebrity chef, also has, uh, may not be in his restaurants, but you have, a, it's a hard, hard to find a bad meal in a Michael Mina restaurant. Uh, and, uh, but some of them, and, and actually some of the bigger stars, the, the Giadas, the Flays, they're just, you know, they're, it's just a branding deal for them. They're, they're just coming, as I like to say, they just fly over town long enough to pick up the check and then they keep going. Right, you know, there is, I was watching uh, uh, last week on uh, Charlie Rose, he had a guest, Steven Starr, who is uh, a restaurant great. tour yeah. in Philadelphia, New York, and yeah. other places. Made and, his name in Philadelphia. Yeah. In Philly, right. Where and, you're from, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And I remember, that was in the early 80s. Yeah. And, and um, actually started with a martini bar, I think. Yeah. But he was, they were talking about um, the difference between a restaurant tour and a chef. And oh, yeah. I mean, because the restaurant, he's the owner. He yeah. hires the chef, he's the one who Cre uh, is responsible for right. the service, right. Right? right? For the quality of the food right. and right. maintaining the he's quality the of the food. He's the producer. He's really more important in a lot of ways than the chef. Yeah, he's the producer. The chefs are kind of like the actors in a way. You know, they okay. they present the public face and they do all that. But the guy who's producing it's the Stephen right. Star of the world. Okay, and uh, 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 Myers and uh, Danny Meyer in New York is another example. Uh -huh. And and that's what a guy like Wolfgang Puck has evolved into. He mm -hmm. used to be a chef, unlike Star and Danny Meyer. Uh, you know, Puck used to be a chef. But these restaurateurs, in their own way, they are like a producer of a movie or a TV show, and they hire everybody, and how committed and good they are determines how good their restaurants are, and Steven Starr is one of the best.
Okay, let's, and he was had no experience in no. that. He was in the film business yeah. prior to opening up a bar. I don't think Danny Meyer in New York had any either. He just he graduated from college, went to New York, started working as a waiter, and then just learned the craft from that point up. Mm -hmm. But he hires chefs, and he hires good ones. So a lot of it has to do with palate, lots of, so, and just commitment and passion. And I think these guys have it, you know. Let's go through your book. It's a, how is it arranged? Well, it's arranged. I think we do the top ten. All right. Uh, and sometimes you'll have to remind That's me of my own, my own top section ten. Section one. Section one is the top ten. And we'll go through that and, in a minute. And, uh, right. and then we do the best of the rest, or the rest right. of the best. So we have 40 more in the back there, 50 essential. I like to say they're not necessarily, I, are they best or essential? I say essential because if I was, my criteria is this. If, if, if a food writer or an avid foodie or a critic from out of town came to town for a month and I had to take him to the 50 restaurants that sort of define the Las Vegas right. food scene, these are the 50 restaurants that define our food scene. Mm -hmm. So, And then I have a the worst. I have my, my bottom 10, which is the... Uh, which is, uh, oh, well, maybe kind. we can talk about that yeah. in a few minutes. <laughs> and then, I have a, yes. then we have a bunch of... In the back, it's a whole bunch of... Index. Uh, index with pizza yeah. joints and burger joints and uh, sushi and, and Mexican tacos and everything else. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's talk about the top 10. Yeah. In case you forgot, now are they in order? No, by the way? no they're alphabetical. I, 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 it was, it was too much stress on my brain to try to figure out number one versus number four. You know, I, so I just said top ten. Here they are. Okay, so. and, and it seems to me that most of these top ten are in the hotels. Most of the top ten are in the hotels. That's true. There's a there's uh, Raku is not in the hotels. Yui Sushi right. is not in the hotels. Uh, Bardo Browserie is one of my. It's just a fabulous French uh, browserie in the Aria Hotel. Right. And, right. and and again, it's a Michael Mina restaurant, as I point out. Mm -hmm. But they have a chef, Josh Smith, who works there, uh -huh. and he is a committed guy. He's an American, but boy, can he, he has a feel for French food, and he just, they execute beautiful, beautiful uh, French bistro and brasserie classics. And it's like, look at that macaroon on the left there, and their, their, their steak frites is just amazing, one, one, incredible French fries. Right. You can go there for a big deal meal, or you can go there for just a, a bunch of mussels or something, and it's really a fabulous restaurant, worth going to the strip for, and not super high-end priced. It's more moderately priced for, for our strip. Yeah. And by the way, now when we're, we're going to the strip for restaurants, now yeah. everybody's charging for parking. Yeah, yeah. Right? Don't get so me started. <laughs> well, I mean, so, I mean, has that impacted the the restaurant business in the hotels? Well, uh, as I like to say, the, the hotels pretend that they want local business, but they really don't give a Right. They don't. Right. Okay. They. I've been hearing this. I've been covering restaurants here 23 years now. And, you know, when times are tough during the recession, oh, yeah, we're trying to get locals to come in. They don't care at all about locals. So unless you're a local yeah, uh, yeah. hotel uh, casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, 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 90, 97, 98% of their business comes from conventions, mm -hmm. and that's all they really care about. I mean, if you're a local, they, they welcome the business. Right. But in terms of catering to locals, forget about it. So you, uh, was this Carbone or Carboni? How do you Carboni, say it? Carboni. Carboni. Carboni, which is an Italian Carboni. restaurant in Aria. It's relatively new, right? Relatively new. Big, yeah. uh, made a big splash in New York about five years ago. New York, it's a little, tiny little restaurant here. They've expanded right. it to, uh, uh, to a large space. Yeah. Really romantic interior. Old-time Italian classics like you would get in big, Philly. Big, big, big dishes. Right? Big, big, yeah, big yeah. format dishes. Great pasta. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. people said, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a change from New York. But, man, did they, they nail it. I mean, if you want to have a... A great Italian, old school Italian meal. Carboni does it. Yeah. yeah. And we, by the way, when you walk in these restaurants, uh, you're very you're recognizable. Yeah. The water, the water's part, but basically, <laughs> and I just right. stroll across the water until I get to my seat. <laughs> so, no, I mean, so I assume that every year you have to, you know, re up. You know yeah. your your your, uh, your your critique of the restaurants, and and you're walking yeah. in. Everybody knows here. Okay, here comes our John Curtis. You know, yeah. um, you know we have to be on our toes. That's a fair question. Uh, it, yeah, I, I'm not anonymous in the least bit anymore. So all I tell people is, I go in. They don't change the food when I walk in the door. I walk in and I eat and I get the big deal service and all that. And sometimes I pay, but sometimes I do not pay. I try to be very upfront about that, and I even say it in the book. But I try to, I just do the best job I can in critiquing the food. I don't mm -hmm. try to critique the service, like going back to what we said earlier, because right. it's not, 
<laughs> you know, I don't really get the same service everybody else does. So I rarely mention the service. Uh -huh. I tell you how things tasted to me. But I've been going to these places a, a dozens of times now. So I, I think I have a pretty good handle on that. And about half of the restaurants in the book don't know who the hell I am. Half of them do. Chinatown, they couldn't care less. I could right, be yeah. Donald Trump <laughs> walking in and they wouldn't care who I, what yeah. I am. So, so it's, uh, and, and it's a good thing you're not rating the service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah Chinatown's right. not known for its service. Which, which, which uh, hotel, if, if you had, okay, you have to go out one night and show somebody you know, some great restaurants. What hotel, in your opinion, has the, the greatest number of great restaurants? No. I would say it's a toss-up between Bellagio and Aria. Okay, Aria, it's, it's hard to find a bad, I'd go to Aria first. Right. It's got Julian Serrano for tapas. They have Sage, Sage is a wonderful restaurant. Sage is a uh, Sean McLean restaurant in Aria that does sort of high-toned uh, American, French-American food. There's their octopus, they do these wonderful cushy oysters with piquillo peppers. S Sage is a sort of a fancy American restaurant and they do their kind of food as well as anybody. Mm -hmm. You go upstairs to Carbone, Bardo, Brasserie. So Aria is a hard hotel to beat for great food. Cosmopolitan. Uh, e, e, well, Cosmo would be number yeah. two because they have A or A by Jose Andres, uh -huh. which is a eight seat restaurant that is uh, $250 a person. Pay, uh, and it's a very, you have to reserve like a month or two months in advance. Right. And you get this wonderful little private meal, almost like a sushi bar, with you and seven other people. Uh -huh. And they serve these amazing little molecular tapas and modern food to you. It's all small bites, but it's wonderful. It's a real foodie destination. Not cheap, but it's like probably one of the best restaurants in America, and it's right in the middle of Cosmopolitan. And then we have uh, L'Italier is, of course, one of my favorites. He's been there Joel for, Rube, yeah. yes, 2005 L'Italier is yeah. great French food. And then, of course, Joel Robichon is yeah. right next door. These are the high-toned French restaurants. And L'Italier, it's Joel Robichon without the $400 a person price tag. You know, it's, it, we've been so influenced by uh, other uh, international foods, whether it be French, Italian, um, Chinese, Vietnamese, Japanese, mm. blah, blah, blah. So is there now an American influence going out to the rest of the world other than McDonald's? I would say it's just the inverse of that. Inverse or converse? I know, I always, converse I know, to be yeah. obvious. Con yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, just the converse of that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, what's happened is the world, we have become the world's melting pot of food. And we don't have a definitive American cuisine like Thailand has a cuisine, or France, or Italy right. has a cuisine, or Turkey has a cuisine. What we have done, our chefs, because we're such a melting pot and heterogeneous in so many ways, we've taken Israeli cooking, and Moroccan cooking, and Italian food, and African food, and our chefs have melded them into this sort of fusion, esoteric cuisine, whether it's a short rib, or it's a piece of fish with Thai spices cooked in the French style, or Italian pasta that has Japanese kind of uh, fish, uh, you know, right. tossed with it. So that's what we're, we're good at. It's not so much we've defined American food, we have redefined the world's food into a world cuisine, and that's what, and, uh, and out, uh, our restaurants do it as well as anybody. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sushi samba being an example Su of Sushi that. samba, uh, uh, big no. box Japanese, Zuma, and uh, yeah. Morimoto, Nobu, all of these places have taken Japanese cuisine and, cr and with Italian and French and, and South American influences. Right. It's great. And it's, one, it's one of the great things about eating in America in the 21st century. By the way, you mentioned, and I was curious, I hadn't eaten there yet at the, uh, the Chica restaurant. There's Plus, Plus, yeah, yeah, or Lorena Garcia. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, going for Miami. Yeah, I'm going for lunch on Friday if you want to join me. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have a tough job. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. It's a tough job. Someone has to do it though. Yeah, okay, so um, you want to go to the worst of the worst? I'm gonna go by 10 well, worst. Uh, we can go. Do you want to go negative or what's good? Let's go negative. Okay, let's, let's go, go negative. negative. We're, 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 Where's my? <laughs> where, where, I don't know. Where's what page? Yeah, I'll, I'll find it for you. Find it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll find it for you. I I think I can find it. What do you think is the most overpriced restaurant in Las Vegas? The most overpriced restaurant. Um, the place where I would never pay for the food. Yeah, well, you don't. You just said no value. You just know you're getting ripped. 
Old Homestead and Caesar's Palace would be right up there mm. with their $40 glasses of wine uh -huh. and their, their $50 or $60 filet mignons and things like that. So some of our steakhouses are criminally expensive. Uh, all steakhouses are expensive, but you take a Bazaar Meat or a Carne Vino, and they really deliver the goods with really chef-driven food. Old Homestead is just phoning it in and charging top, top prices for its stuff. I mean, um, let me think. Uh, you know, Eiffel Tower Restaurant hasn't changed its menu since it opened 20 right. years ago, and it's very expensive. You know, you see, also see a lot of turnover in the hotels. You know, these restaurants seem to last uh, eight, ten years, and then there's the replacement. The leases are up. up. The marketing deal is up. That's usually what. So it it's is. all about the dollars. It's all about the franchise. It's all about the the branding deal, the the, the licensing deal. Uh -huh. And then when it's up, it's up. You know what I mean? I I wonder if Bobby, they're going to continue Mesa Grill with Bobby Flay when his mm -hmm. lease is finally up or his uh, uh, branding deal is up. Some of them, but God bless the Bellagio, they have kept it very consistent now. I mean, they have like nine restaurants there, and they're all excellent, and mm -hmm. they've been good from the day they opened. So, I mean, I love the Bellagio. But it's, again, they're all dinner restaurants. They're all very high-toned and inexpensive. So, but, but, and they're only open for dinner, which, uh, uh, so you're going to pay a lot of money and, there. And look, and everything's getting more expensive. So yeah. are restaurants, can they make money without the liquor and the alcohol, the wine? No, no. You need that? No. I mean, not, not even, uh, not even a strip restaurant, which is full almost ninety percent of the time. Can they, they, the food is they almost just break even on their food. Right. It's the booze, and I mean, I hate the wine prices in Las Vegas because they're so overpriced. And but they're more than two times. The two court, times. Two and a half. Four times, times. Four times the price on the of strip. It's, it's four times on the right. strip, and it's it's it, you know they, some of these wine directors should be in jail for what they charge uh -huh. people, and and they get away with it because they're just they're just soaking the tourists, and the tourists let them get away with it. Yeah. Uh, it seems like, you know, would you rather have a glass of wine or throw the money into a slot machine? At least you get something for the wine, At least you get something. If you're going to yeah. pay 40 bucks for a glass of wine or $200 for right. a $40 bo bottle of wine, yeah, at least you're, you're drinking something. So Okay, let's talk about the, the, the bad ones. Okay, the bad ones. In, in order, my bottom 10, the Hush Puppy, terrible. Hot and juicy crawfish, the cheapest seafood in town. Bob <laughs> Taylor's Ranch House, they haven't, you know. Because well, at one time, Bob Taylor's well, was, you know, in the 70s and 80s in this town. It was like, hey, let's drive out to the middle of the desert and go have a steak. I thought I, well, you and I probably ran yeah, into probably, each other yeah. back in the day. In Bob. Yeah. I used to love it. Mm -hmm. I went out there. Oh, my God. Brown lettuce, tough steaks. Uh -huh. I mean, they're just going through the motions. I'm not going to pick on everybody here. Uh, the celebrity chef places I can't stand. Rivea, which is an Elaine Ducasse restaurant at the top of Mandalay Bay. Which is, it's it's a French guy trying to do Italian food and uh -huh. charging it through the nose. That might be the most overpriced restaurant, Rivea, and then of course Olive, which is a Todd English restaurant, which is terrible, but it's got such a great location in the Bellagio. The Bellagio yeah. It's full 100 percent of the time, of the yeah. time. and you know there's a couple of places like Pamplemousse and Golden Steer that I can't send people to anymore. And, and one time, once again, yeah. great. You know, destination restaurants in Las Vegas. I want to love these restaurants. I want to love them. But I go there and I go, come on, dudes, you haven't changed the menu or the or the carpet, you know, in yeah. 25 years. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, how can I how can I recommend this place? And they don't care because they're Pomplemousse, the guy who owns the building. And, you know, it's just a terrible restaurant. But but the cabbies get paid to drop people off there. Right. And that's how they stay. No, but business. it wasn't like that uh, 30 years no, ago. No, 30 years ago. It wasn't that way 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But man, I wouldn't go there now with someone else's bank account. With yeah. your, I wouldn't let you pay for a meal there, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> the um, let's talk about the fast food. Okay. Let's talk about the good stuff here. I mean, okay, pizza. Where's the best pizza in town? I knew you were going to ask me that, so I'm, I'm prepared with the answer on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, I like for mass-produced pizza. I like Metro Pizza a lot. Right. I, uh, for gourmet pizza, set the bellow. And downtown, have you been to Evil Pie downtown? No. No. Evil Pie is great. It's New York pizza. Right. It's that kind of thin, thin crust, thin crust. Thin crust with a good marinara sauce and good, uh, mm -hmm. good quality uh, mozzarella cheese. Evil Pie, which is kind of a, um, a business being run by one of the Fine Brothers and uh, the uh -huh. son of Evil Knievel. I, I, went, I thought I was going to hate it, and it's great. <laughs> Evil Pie, go to Evil Pie if you like a good New York style pizza. Yeah, well, the, the, the fines have really gotten into the restaurant oh, yeah. business. Yeah. Right there, and uh, Jamba Juice and yeah. uh, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. And, and the Golden others. Tiki it, they own. Yeah. And one, I, I, get, I get confused which, which fine son so Jeff. Uh, Jeff owns yeah. which. which oh, I, don't know. I yeah. think it's Chef. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they, Evil Pie was a big, big home run for them, and, and, I, and I, I love it. So yeah. when you go and evaluate pizza, I mean, there's essentially 
two types of deep dish and a thin crust. I mean, you start there. Deep right? dish isn't pizza. It's a casserole. Okay. But there are people who like this Chicago type deep yeah. dish kind big, of pizza. Big fat Midwestern pizza. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, big fat Midwestern but, pizza. But you really prefer the, the I do also, yeah. the, the thin. I like it thin and crisp. I like to make, you know, like uh, Dufournier. They can make a pizza in uh, in three minutes or six minutes yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Put it in a oh, special I for, oven. I forgot to mention Dewey Forney. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Dewey yeah. Forney is right at the top, too. Uh, right. th thank you. Uh, yeah, I like, well, what I look for, I look for ingredients. You know, I look for a good crust, and then I look for a good marinara sauce, and, and decent, meaning not polio, Cisco cheese mm -hmm. on top. There's mass-produced cheese, and there's better quality mozzarella, and you can taste the better quality mozzarella on a better pizza, like they do at Dewey Forney. Yeah. What about burgers? Now, I, I have stopped eating hamburgers, now I'm eating veggie burgers, and I go to Whole Foods, and there's a product there called Beyond Meat that has a veggie burger that tastes Identical. You'll never believe this. And, uh, one day I'll have to get you one. The taste. You're dead like to it. me, Bernstein. You're <laughs> dead to me. <laughs> but, but uh, let's talk about burgers. Uh, burgers. First of all, I've never eat anything that's named after something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never, got it. never eat a tofurkey, you know, a, tur a tofu turkey. Turkey bacon. Yeah, yeah, a turkey bacon. Never eat something named yeah, after something else. Yeah. Uh, I like a real hamburger. Right. Although veggie burgers, I, I'm not a vegetarian, okay. but I understand. Skip it, the veggie. Let's get to the good stuff. The okay. good stuff. Where, good, where do you go for the best hamburger good, in town? Good burgers. Mm. Believe it or not, as much as I trash Bobby Flay, Bobby Flay's burger on the strip is really good. Uh -huh. It's called the, the uh, Bobby's, I don't know, it's Bobby's Burgers or something. Really good. Um, Steakhouse Morels in in in, the, in has has a great one. Marche Bacchus has a great hamburger. Mm -hmm. uh, and Iron has a great hamburger. I go to better restaurants and have their burger rather than burger burgers, just like right. anywhere. If I'm going to do a fast food burger, it's going to be In-N-Out burger. Because I just read somewhere in a national survey that for the first time, uh, In-N-Out was not number one. Now Five Guys was voted number one burger place over In-N-Out. You know, they're as close as one is to two. Uh -huh. You know, I, I like Five Guys burgers, but I, I've tasted them side by side. I did it on my website years ago, and I preferred the In-N-Out right. burger. I think Five Guys is sort of a copy of an In-N-Out burger, but they're both good, and I like better quality stuff like that. So, uh -huh. yeah, In-N-Out burger. But if you want a great burger, go to a place like Carne Vino. A ste all the steakhouses, Delmonico, they make fabulous hamburgers. So where do I get the book? Uh, Amazon.com. Right now, Amazon. Because, I mean, there's no bookstores anymore. Yeah, go to Amazon.com. How about you? Sell, you sell them in the gift shops at the hotels. I. You need to get that wired. From out. your mouth to God's ears. Yeah. Okay, that's what I wish my publisher would do, but I, I can only nag him so much. Okay. Now we have about 30 seconds left. Okay. But if I were to go to a different city, how would I know what restaurants are good in a different city? Very tough. You got to get on the inter internet and really do your research. Unless Yelp. you can find a but Yelp. Yelp is not as good. Just it, it, this uh, Google best restaurants or restaurant critics and then try to find their website. If you can find a restaurant critic in another city, go to their website and read through it. That's the best way to find a good restaurant in a, in a foreign city. Right. So John Curtis, uh, eating Las Vegas 2017 edition because things change so rapidly. You got to do this every year in this town. Bon appetit to everyone. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, John. There are many types of careless drivers. Those who text and drive, drink and drive, and those distracted drivers. If you've been hurt, you need to call me. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com.